today's class completed mathematics the first chapter in mathematics so from today onwards we shall go for focusing on first chapter in science you all know that in this academic year you are going to learn total 16 chapters in science and these have been divided to three branches as for physics chemistry and biology in physics we have five chapters chemistry we have five chapters and biology we have six chapters hope that all of you are get ready with the notebooks physics chemistry and biology so before going to commence the first chapter in physics once we shall come to know what are the chapters that we are going to learn in this academic year so now let me give you the syllabus of physics chemistry and biology separately please take the notebook and go on writing in index first take a physics note <clears throat> science syllabus in that first i'll give you the chapters that we are going to learn in physics and whatever the chapters names are i'm going to give you give you they are to be covered in the same order only even this order has been given by the central board of secondary education we are going to follow the same right the very first one is it is about electricity in your previous classes also you have learned about different electrical components and the simple circuit and how to make a simple circuit using those components some related terms have also been discussed so but its extended part is going to be discussed in this chapter it is electricity first chapter is electricity second one you are also very familiar with the different types of magnets it is one of the substance which attracts iron and iron like substances so there is a relationship between the magnetic field produced by the magnet and also electricity so it is to be studied in the chapter called magnetic effects of electric current after writing the name of the chapter electricity just leave a line and write second chapter it is magnetic effects of electric current magnetic effects of <clears throat> electric current third one we are very familiar with the different forms of energy and their properties uses and the devices that we are that we are go going to use these forms of energy are to be discussed in the chapter called sources of energy right the name of the third chapter it is sources of energy sources of energy next fourth one your students when you stand in front of a mirror you know that you can see your image it is due to it is due to light is it not and the phenomena that is involved in this is a reflection and also you will notice that when you go for placing any of assume that you have taken some amount of water in a glass beaker and just place a pencil in that and see the pencil the part of the pencil which is inside the water see that from outside you can come to know that the part of the pencil which is dipped or which is immersed in the water appears thicker than the actual thickness it is due to one phenomena called refraction so these are to be discussed in the chapter called light reflection and refraction so right this is fourth chapter is light reflection 
ein Refractor. Light, Reflection and Refraction. The fifth one, it is related to again light. We are very familiar with many phenomena related to light. It may be experience of day and night. It may be the formation of the shadow. It may be the formation of set of seven colors that is formed in the sky. That is rainbow and dispersion concept. So, all, and we go for using the different types of lenses for correcting the defects of eyes. So, all of you are very familiar with these concepts. And this academic year, we will get more information about these phenomena in the chapter called the human eye and colorful world. This is fifth chapter, right? The human eye, the human eye, eye, and colorful world. The human eye and colorful world. So these are the five chapters are to be discussed in physics. In chemistry also, we have five chapters. So let's go for let's let's go for coming to know what are these chapters. Uh, please open chemistry notebook and open index column. There you write chemistry syllabus for this academic chemistry. The very first one is every day we come across many chemical reaction. and different types of chemical reactions. You may take an example of rusting of the iron, the rancidity of the food. Uh, yes, you must write these in your uh, notebook only, that is in index. And you are also uh, very familiar with, uh, familiar, familiar with <clears throat> the chemical reaction that is taking place during uh, while cooking the food by your, uh, your mother. So such interesting facts are to be discussed in the chapter called chemical reactions and also equations. Chemical reactions and equations. So I have, students, I have told you to keep the notebook separately for these physics, chemistry, and biology. So you have to write the names of chemistry chapter in separate notebook. The first chapter is, it is chemical reactions and equations. Chemical reactions and equations. Now, second one. Your students, every day even we come across many eatable things, but the face expression of you is different from one item to another item. Some will be pungent, some will be very spicy, some will be very sweet, is it not? Some will be very sour, sour in taste. So it is all because of the taste and this taste, for this taste, chemicals, are, chemicals present in those food items are responsible. So these will be discussed in the chapter called Acids, Bases, and Salts. Right. Second one, it is Acids, Bases, and Salts. Third one, in your previous class, particularly in eighth standard, you have learned about metals as well as non-metals, right? Even you have come across with a few reactions with respect to metals and non-metals. And these are going to be discussed in detail again in this academic, in this academic year, in the name, in the name of the chapter called 
metals and non-metals. This is third chart. Metals and non-metals. Next. So that you are written. Now it is fourth one. Your students, you are very familiar with some of the materials like diamond, graphite, charcoal. You know what are these? Yes, these are different allotropic forms of carbon, right? And we will here in this chapter, we will go for focusing more on carbon element. Not only this, even the compound containing this carbon atom, it may be the carbon dioxide, it may be the alcohol, that is C2H5, OH, like that. Uh, not only that, one of the main component of LPG, it is butane. So all such carb, all such carbon and their compounds are to be discussed in the chapter called carbon and its compounds. So right for the chapter, carbon, carbon and its compounds. Carbon and its compounds. Next, fifth one is also very interesting. You are familiar with metals and non-metals, which I have already discussed in eighth standard. And there are plenty of, these are the elements and there are plenty of elements. You know that how many are there? Total 118 elements are there. And these 18 elements are arranged in a table. We call the table as periodic table. And there we can come to know why the particular position of particular element and what are its properties on what basis the position has been, has been given to these elements in the periodic table. All such interesting things are to be discussed in the chapter called periodic classification of elements, right? Fifth chapter is periodic classification of periodic classification of elements. Periodic classification of elements. Hope that you have written. Next. Let's come to know even biology syllabus as well. Just I am going to give you the names of the chapter. So please open biology notebook in that open index column. Then write the names of the chapter. Biology. The very first chapter that we are going to discuss in biology is life processes. Life processes. Second one is, it is control and coordination. Right. Second one, control and coordination. Third one, it is how do organisms reproduce? Right. Third one, how do organisms reproduce? organisms reproduce. Fourth one, it is heredity and evolution. Fourth one, heredity and evolution. Fifth one, it is our environment, our environment. Uh, 
and the sixth chapter it is the management of natural resources right management of natural resources Hope that you have written. Now, just open physics notebook. So, let's move on to the first chapter in physics, that is electricity. So, please. So, is there any chapter production? So, dear students, one thing I'll clarify you. For the reduction of syllabus, please never think about it. We will cover each and every concepts given in NCRT textbook. So 100% syllabus will be covered. Let us see what will happen in forthcoming days, whether the CBSE board is going to reduce the syllabus or not. Let us not mind about it. Let's focus only on the syllabus. Right. Chapter one, it is electricity. Right. The name of the chapter should be written in regular pattern as you are followed in mathematics. So you had made three columns, first column for name of the chapter, second one, sorry, chapter number, second column, name of the chapter, and third one is today's date. Right. Electricity. Hope you have written. Have you written? Yes, yes. Okay, let's begin the chapter electricity. Uh, Prashant sir, you may give some, uh, you may give chance to some students. Okay. Dear students, let's begin the chapter electricity. And you all know that this chapter is very familiar to you as you have learned, learned about many concepts in your previous classes. Now, once we shall focus on the basics of this chapter, that is electricity. You also know that electricity is one of the form of energy and one of the most convenient form of energy because it can be generated, it can be stored, it can be transferred from where it is generated to where it is uh, required, and it has plenty of users. Now, could you, anybody want to tell what is electricity? Yes? I said that. It is a form of energy. But do you call all forms of energy as electricity? No, there must be no. one of the special characteristics of that particular form of energy. So the flow of charges. Flow of charges. That is called electricity. Very good. Yeah, no doubt. See, a form of energy. Elec Electricity is nothing but a form of energy. Yeah, yeah, somebody is giving charged particles. It will, it will represent even the movement of the charged particles. Even not only that, even the charges which are at rest. 
So from this, we can define the electricity as the form of energy or the energy acquired by the charged particles because of their movement or because of their motion or because of their position is called electricity. And electricity is also termed as electrical energy. It's not movement of electrons. I'll tell you that, I'll come to that. Once I repeat. Yes, the energy acquired by the charged particles because of their motion or position is called electrical energy or electricity. Then as it is a form of energy, could you tell what is the unit that we use to measure electrical energy? Yes? Ampere. Sir, ampere. Ampere, sir. And not ampere. Ampere, sir. Ampere, sir. Ampere, sir. Ampere. You, know that? you know that it is a form of energy. The SI unit, that is system of international unit of energy is joule. As it is a form of energy, even its SI unit is also joule. Please do remember the SI unit of electricity or electrical energy is joule. You, once you recall the definition of electrical, electrical energy, it is the energy acquired by the charged particles, right? Here we are using the word charge. Then do you know what is the charge? How it will be? Yes? Positive or negative is charge. Of course, you are telling the types of charges. I am asking you, what are charges? Dear students, in your, in your previous classes also, you have discussed about the charged particles in the, in the phenomenon called lightning. You will observe a streak of light which is spread from sky to the ground. It is due to the collision of the charged particles, right? Do you remember that? See, here, yeah. you can observe that. Here we have the sky and they have attained the charge. We have mentioned that. And here is the ground. See that here also some charged particles are there. When these charged particles collide with each other and you get a big streak of light, we call this as lightning. Don't type any definition, just listen. Not only this, even you have come across about charged particles with other activities, like rubbing, cool with a dry hair. Rubbing cool with a dry hair. When it is brought near the pieces of paper, then it will attract the papers, small pieces of paper, right? And you can observe this. See that here we have the cone when it is rubbed with a dry air, then it will attract the small pieces of paper. It is due to the existence of the charged particles. Not only this, here we have inflated balloons. Two inflated balloons are there and we have a woolen. When this balloon is rubbed with a woolen, it gets charged. Right, And when this charged balloon is brought close to another balloon, which is uncharged, what will happen? They will attract. attract. Each other, yeah. attract. They attract. Each they will attract. Other. Right. Similarly, even if the second balloon, inflated balloon, is rubbed with a balloon, even it will also get charged. When these two charged balloons are brought close to each other, what will happen? Repel, 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 each each other. Other. repel each other. Of course, you are right. Then could you tell what is responsible for in these cases, that is attraction, attraction of the pieces of paper by the uh, charged comb, then Different attraction and charges. repulsion that we attraction and repulsion that we see in the in case of balloons. Like charges attract, like charges repel, unlike charges attract. Your statement is 100% right. 
but it is well uh, it is the property but i am asking you what is responsible for attraction or uh, attraction or repulsion of the balloons charges 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 acting between this charge coulomb as well as pieces of paper and the force that is acting between these balloons next the force acting between very good which is you are right the the that force is that is acting between the cloud and the ground it is not magnetic force it is electrostatic force have you got it for yes, the existence sir. of electrostatic force charge is responsible hence we define the charge as the property it is one of the property of a particle which is responsible for the existence of electrostatic force have you understood once i repeat once i repeat the property of a particle which is responsible for the existence of electrostatic force is No sir, line. write it on the board, sir. Pardon me. So that we can uh, copy in our notes. Ah, oh, definitely. I have already given you the clear instruction. I'll make you to maintain the notes also. I'll write them on the board, board as well. This time, giving you the basic information. Once I repeat, the property of a particle which is responsible for the existence of the electrostatic force is known as a charge. okay let us get to more information about the charge and before that first you write the definition of electricity nothing but electrical energy right right first side it is electricity electricity in bracket you may write electrical energy electrical energy start writing the definition from here from this margin it is the energy acquired by the charged particles the energy acquired by acquired by the charged particles charged particles due to due to the motion on position the energy acquired by the charged particles due to their motion or position is called is called electrical energy nothing but electricity electricity you all know that this electricity can be measured as it is a physical quantity so its si unit its si unit is it is joule and the symbolic representation is is capital j capital j written up the full form of si is system of international system of international unit of electricity is joule next and even just we come across one of the important word that is called the charge right charge charge can be defined as as i said just you can recall with me the property of a particle which is responsible for electrostatic force the property of a particle which is responsible for electrostatic force is known as yeah it is known as the charge right the property of a particle property of a particle which is responsible for 
electrostatic force. Electrostatic force. It may be either attraction or repulsion. It's called. It's called charge. Usually, the charge is denoted by the symbol Q. Dear students, just observe it. Now you may stop writing. Even the charge is also measurable quantity. Hence, it belongs to physical quantity. So as it can be measured, do you know the unit that you go for using, measuring the charge? Yes. Coulomb. It is Coulomb. Coulomb. Not volts. It is Coulomb. Coulomb. Coulomb is the unit of charge. Is the SI unit of charge. You may write them. SI unit of charge. I'll just write. SI unit is Coulomb. And the spells are C O U. M-O-M-B, Coulomb, in bracketed, right is symbolic. Coulomb, in bracket, you may write a symbolic representation, that is C. Dear students, just I had shown you the charged bodies. Look here. Here, in this first example, the cool base, the charged body, pieces of paper, they are uncharged body. When charged body is brought nearby uncharged body, the attraction takes place. Similarly, here, there are two balloons. Assume that both are rubbed with a woolen and the charge acquired by these two will be same. Hence, the repulsion takes place. One of the students said earlier, that is, the light charges, when same kind of charges are sir, brought, excuse me, sir. they repel each other. When unlike charges, nothing but different types of charges are brought close to each other, they sir, excuse attract me, sir, each other. Board. Right, it is one of the property of the charge, or it is also known as law of electric charges. According to this, like, pole, like charges repel each other and unlike charges attract each other. And this will give us information about there are different types of charges. Do you know what are these? <coughs> You know what are the types positive of charges? And negative. Positive and negative. Yes, you are right. One is positive charge, and second, second one is negative, negative charge. These are the two types of charges, and these charge particles are accumulated on the different objects. The total charge or the the total charge obtained by a body that is known as quantity of the charge. Don't say about anode and cathode, they are electrodes. You have to focus on the information which is being given by me. As I said, the total amount of charged particles that are accumulated in a body is called quantity of charge. You may write that. Quantity of charge. That is, total charge accumulated in a body is called quantity of charge. And this quantity of charge is denoted by Q. And this is equal to, we have a formula to find out quantity of charge. It is N into E. Q is equal to N into E. Then I'll tell you what are N and E. And before that, just we have come across the two types of charges. Once we shall recall them, here are mine. 
positive energy. Types of, yes, types of charges. As I said, there are two types of charges. One is positive charge. And second one is negative charge. One is positive charge and second one is negative charge. Whatever the positively charged particle will be there. And we call that charge part, positively charged particle as proton. Positively charged particle is known as proton. And the negatively charged particle electron. 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 Electrons. Negatively charged particles are known as electrons. Hope that you are writing with me. Oh, yes, sir. You also know that proton, it has a unit mass and its charge is positive. Hence, the symbolic representation of proton can be written as P plus one, one. Got it? This is proton. And you also know that <clears throat> Charge can be measured. To measure that, we use a unit called Coulomb. Then do you know what is the charge of proton? Yes. What is the charge of proton? 1.6 into 10 to Correct. You are right. 1.6 into 10 to 10 to 20. No. Increase. 1.6 into... 10 raised to the power minus 19 coulomb. That's negative charge in the world. It is a positively charged particle called proton. Hence, you can also mention plus. Plus indicates it is proton. Its charge is 1000 raised to the power minus 19 coulomb. The negatively charged particle called electron and the electron can be represented by a symbol called E minus one zero means it has negative charge and its mass is negligible. You only be thinking that if mass is to be taken as zero, then why should we consider it as a particle? Is it not? I said that it has very small mass, therefore it is to be neglected. Just I'll give you a simple example for understanding why the mass of an electron is not considered. Imagine that you have checked your weight using the balance and it shows, assume that it shows it is 45 kg. Just Pluck a hair from your head, then check your mass. Will it make any difference? No, sir. No, no. Sir. why? What's the reason? The reason the is the mass of hair is negligible. So, in that way, you can understand the mass of the electron is too small, hence, its mass is to be neglected is 9.1 into 10 raised to the power minus 31, which you have got in your previous class as well, right? So therefore it is to be neglected and we write it as zero. Then its value, the charge of an electron is, that is also 1.1 into 10 raised to the power minus 90 coulomb. Got it? Then you may be thinking that, sir, both the values are same with respect to proton and electrons. Then what difference is there? It, it has positive and negative. Sir, positive, sir. It doesn't have negative. Right. Yeah. Negative. Proton, it is positively charged particle. And electron is negatively charged particle. And don't take this value as negative. What is it? Your negative indicates it is electron. Positive indicates proton. Written up. Okay. Now coming to this formula. 
Q is equal to N into E. It is the formula used to find out the total quantity of charge. Here, N is the number of charge particles and E is E is the charge of an electron that is 1.6 into 10 raised to the power minus 90 coulomb. Followed. If it is so, okay. if it is so, then we can come to know that some number of electrons will constitute some quantity of charge. Let us take the quantity of charge as one coulomb. Then do you know how many electrons charge is equal to one coulomb? 6.25 into 10 to the power 18. Yes, you are right. Very good. Dear students, once I repeat, please observe the board. Here, quantity of charge is written as Q is equal to N into E. Now, if I take the quantity as the quantity of charge as one coulomb, then we can find out the number of charge, number of electrons charge will represent one coulomb. So now let's go for calculate, calculating that and rubbing this part. Shall I? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Diraja. 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 So continue, sir. Yes, students. Now we will come to know the number of charge particles or the number of electrons will constitute one coulomb of charge. The question can be asked like this: How many electrons constitute one coulomb of charge? Let's go for calculating. Right. So one coulomb, one coulomb of charge, one coulomb of charge. In bracket, you write it as a question. That is, how many electrons, how many electrons constitute One coulomb of charge. One coulomb of charge. Good question. <laughs> Dear students, please do remember a question can be asked on this either for one mark or for two marks. Two marks, if, if it is asked for two marks, they'll expect the calculation. Okay, so let's go for calculate. And please put double star mark for this. This is an important uh, concept. We will find out how many electrons will represent one coulomb of charge. Here I'll write the data. They are given the quantity of charge. What is the quantity of the charge? Six into ten raised to eighteen electrons. No, 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 no. Please understand. What quantity of charge is given? Point six into ten to the power minus nine. You are right. You are right. One coulomb of charge. Charge is already given. That is Q is equal to one coulomb. And you are going to find out the number of electrons which constitute one coulomb of charge. How many electrons are there? Do you know the number of electrons which constitute one coulomb? One is, is going to be calculated. to ten to the power. N. N represents the number of charged particles. Next, but we know that the charge of an electron. The charge of an electron is it is one point six into ten raised to the power minus ninety coulomb. <coughs>
Okay. You have written this information. Now write. Let's go for calculus. What is the formula used to find out quantity of charge? Q is equal to n into e. N into e. Equal to n into e. We want the number of charged particles. So solve n from this. N is equal to is Q by e. Q by e. And we are we all know that quantity of charge is one coulomb. And the charge of an electron is. 1.6 into 10 raised to the power minus 90 coulomb. Followed. Once I repeat, the quantity of charge is 1 coulomb. I will write C here. Charge of 1 electron is 1.6 into 10 raised to the power minus 90 coulomb. Both get cancelled. We'll get only this much. Now, this is equal to Here it is, one pi. Here, 1.6 is there. Just look at the book. 1.6 can be written as 16 by 10. Right? And when, 16, when 10 yeah. is taken to the numerator, it will be 10 raised to the power minus 1. Have you followed this? Please ask yes, me sir. if you do not understand. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And if uh, you have understood, please tell me. Tell again, sir. Tell again, sir. Did you understand this? Sir. Repeat okay. it, sir. Sir, tell again, sir. Once I repeat. Here, 1.6 is there. 1.6 can, it is a decimal form. It can be written in fraction form as 16 by 10, because after this one, we have one digit, I've taken one zero. Then take 10 to the numerator. Then it becomes 10 raised to the power minus one. Got it? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, it is, I'll write 1.6 as 16 into 10 raised to the power minus one, into 10 raised to the power minus 90. Sir, why minus 1 came, sir? Why? You take 10 to the numerator, you have to recall law of exponents. If 1 by a raised to the power n is there, when it is taken to the numerator, it becomes a raised to the power minus n. Similarly, 10 raised to the power 1 is there, on taking to the numerator, it becomes 10 raised to the power minus 1. Now, this is understood. So, 1 by 16 into 10 raised to the power minus 1, 10 raised to the power minus 90 is 10 raised to the power minus 20. 20. Next. Observe. Here, 1 should be divided by 16. I'll, okay. I'll, to make you to understand this calculation, I'm extending one more step. I'll write 1 by 16 as it is. Now take 10 raised to the power minus 20 to the numerator. It becomes 10 raised to the power plus 20. If not understand, please ask me. No, sir. Okay. No, sir. Repeat it, sir. Okay. Once I repeat, look at from here. I have written 1 by 16 as it is. Observe 10 raised to the power minus 20. It is in the denominator. And take that to the numerator. And take it, it becomes 10 raised to the power plus 20. Now, let me divide 1 by 16. 1 by 16. Look, 16, here 1 is not divisible by 16. I'll take decimal, take 1, 0. 10 is not divisible by 16. Take 1, 0 here, here, also 1, 0. It is 100. Now, 16, how much are? 
Sir, I cannot see the board clearly. Can you see the board? Is it visible clearly? Sir, clearly. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, clear, clear. Clear. Yes, sir. Right. Uh, now, it is 80. 16. Faiza. Faiza. Now, I'll write 1 by 16 as 0. 0. 0.0625 into 10 raised to the power 20. Next, dear students, in a standard, you have learned about expressing the value in scientific notation. I'll tell you that. Just observe the board. Look at them. Here, when you are expressing the value in scientific notation, we take that value either equal to 10 or less than 10. Here, look here. Here, 625 is there. Now I can write it as 6.25. <coughs> now I have taken decimal after two digits. Hence, we can Eight write it as minus into 10 raised to the power 20. Now this is equal to 6.25 into 10 raised to the power minus 2, 10 raised to the power 20, it is 10 raised to the power 18. 18. Hope that you have understood the calculation. Sir, yeah. why minus 2 came, sir? We can write the... Sir, why minus 2? Sir, why minus 2? Okay, once I repeat. Here, after decimal, we have four digits. I am going to take the digit after two digits. Sorry, I am going to take the decimal after two digits. Hence, it is 10 raised to the power minus 2. Got it? Next. Yes, sir. Minus 2 plus 20 is 18. Now, I will write the final, final conclusion. So, 1 coulomb is equal to 6.25 into 10 raised to the power 18. Electrons charge. <laughs> Go to this. The question: How many electrons constitute one coulomb of charge? Six point two five into ten raised to the power eighteen electrons charge is nothing but one coulomb. Have you copied this? Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> Could you tell how many electrons would constitute two coulomb of charge? Twelve point five into ten raised Very good. It is multiply this by two. Twelve point five. Six point five two is up. It is twelve point five into ten raised to the power eighteen. Electrons charge. It was given in the examination for two marks. If it is asked for two marks, you need to go for calculation. And even directly they may ask it for one mark. Just how many electrons will constitute one coulomb of star? You have to write 6.25 into 10 raised to the power 18 electrons. <clears throat> Over. Now I'm going to rub it. Dear students, <clears throat> with respect to the charge particles, you have learned some important concepts in your previous classes. 
regarding when the charges are at rest. And in this academic year, we are going to learn about the concepts related to the charges which are in motion. So based on this, electricity can be divided into two parts. A branch of electricity which deals with the charges at rest. You know what it is? Neutrons. My question, please understand my question. We have, we have defined electricity as the energy acquired by the charged particles, either because of their position or because of their motion. When Dear students, here observe, in these cases, whether the charged particles are at rest or they are in motion. Are they in motion? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Are they moving? Yes, no, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, you are right. Look here. One, please observe this picture. Here, the comb is there. It is rubbed with a dry air. It gets a charge. These charged particles will not move from one region to another region. They are on the comb only. Got it? These are the charged particles which are at rest. Similarly, very good. Vishwath, you are right. Here, the inflated balloon is there. And it is to be rubbed with a woolen. On rubbing, both get charged, but these charged particles will not transfer from one region to another region. They are also are at rest. So we call these charges as static charges, and the electricity is known as static electricity. Followed the type of electricity in which in which the charges are at rest. The type of electricity in which the charges are at rest or the type of electricity which is studied when the charges are at rest is known as static electricity. Whereas, observe, dear students, you are very familiar with this picture. What does it represent? In that you can notice that here you have we have used some electrical components like wire, wire, the bulb, bulb is there, switch battery. is there, and also battery. a cell. cell. Cell is there. When you switch on, then the bulb start glowing. So there is a connection between that switch. And bulb, is it not? That connector is the charge particles. So as the charge particles will move from cell to the uh, bulb, therefore bulb glows as soon as switch is on. Here the charge particles are in motion. So it is a type of electricity in which the charges are in motion. And we call this as, yes, what type of electricity it is? Very good. It is current electricity is all excellent. Pratiksha DG. It is also called dynamic electricity. What is the type of electricity which is studied when the charges are in motion is known as dynamic electricity. Dear students, in this chapter, we will focus completely on dynamic electricity. Just note down the point uh, regarding the types of electricity. Right. Side Types of electricity. Types of electricity. One is static electricity, which you have already studied in your previous classes. Static electricity. Current electricity. 
is current electricity or dynamic electricity, which is going to be discussed in this academic year. Right. Dynamic, dynamic electricity or current electricity. Current electricity. <coughs> Written up. Yes, sir. Dear students, you just observe the second one, dynamic electricity, which is also known as current electricity. Here, we have a word called current. Do you know what is the meaning of current? Rate of flow of electrons. Many times we go for, many times we go for using the word current, like current of air, current of water, is it not? Then tell the meaning of current. Very good. Muhammad Rakin, you are right. It is to flow, the movement. If the running water is there, we say that it is current of water. When the air is moving, then we say that it is current of air. Got it? Here, whatever the circuit I show, in this circuit, when you switch on, the bulb start flowing. It is because of the flow of charged particles in the wire. So this flow of charged particles is nothing but electric current. But actual definition is the rate of flow of electric charges. Then why, what is that rate of flow of electric charges? Electric current. Listen. Here, the charged particles, the charged particles are in motion in the wire. So if they are in motion, they have to, every time, they have to pass through the cross section of the wire. And it takes some time as well. I think the concept to be bit clear. Uh, dear students, now let me go for explaining it. This electric current, before that, one thing I'll clarify that we were very familiar with electric circuit before the discovery of electrons because the concepts of electricity were explained based on the protons. The reason is First, we discovered protons. Later, we, we discovered electrons. Okay. Here, I draw a circuit. This is a battery. And here is a switch. Here is a bulb. And it's positive terminal. And it's negative terminal of the battery. So when you switch on, the bulb start blowing. Because of the movement of the charged particles from battery to the bulb, right? So these, these charged particles will move in the wire. How they will be moving? Let me show you that. Look here. This is the enlarged part of the conductor. Where, whatever, wherever you want, you can take. Either this part, this, this, this or this. I have taken a large part of the conductor. In that, the charged particles will be there. I am going to take these charged particles as electrons. Now, you should notice the direction in which the charged particles are in motion. When it is not, uh, when the switch is not on. So, these charged particles will be moving randomly in all the direction. When it is connected to terminals of a battery, then these charged particles set into uh, set to move in one particular direction. Observe this. This is the direction. 
followed. When these charged particles, they start moving in one particular direction, every time they will pass through the cross section, that is the part of the conductor. Followed. And to pass the cross section of the conductor, they will take some time. Movement of the charged particles with respect to time. And we call this as the rate of flow of electric charges. And this rate of flow of electric charges is known as electric current. Now, to make you to understand the meaning of the rate of flow of electric charges, your students, you should not go for copying any of these. Just observe the rate of flow of electric charges. Let me tell you the meaning of this. So why the charges will go in that direction? Ah, I'll tell you that. <clears throat> Here, assume that there is an aquarium. An aquarium in that water is there up to this level. In that some fishes are there. Now you are going to place a ring in the aquarium. Now imagine that that whole aquarium will represent a conductor. The aquarium represents conductor. And these fishes will represent the charged particles. Charged particles. And this ring will represent the cross section of the conductor. Cross section of the conductor. Now, a small task for you. That is, you should count how many fishes will pass through this ring in the unit time. In the unit time means it may be for one second, it may be for one minute. If you count, if you count the number of fishes pass through this ring in the unit time, then we call this as we call this as the rate of flow of fishes. Now let us apply this to the concept. Once I repeat. I'll tell you that. Please observe it. The number of fishes pass through the ring in the unit time is known as the rate of flow of fishes. When it is applied to these charged particles, the number of charged particles pass through any cross section of the conductor in the unit time is known as the rate of flow, flow of electric charges. And this rate of flow of electric charges is known as electric current. Did you understand? Yes, sir. Did you understand? Yes, sir. One second. The rate of flow of electric charges is known as electric current. And some students were asking the question that, sir, here, where, uh, where these charged particles get charged? Then what will make them to get charged? How do they move? To know about all this, we need to understand some more terms like the electric potential, potential difference, electromotive force. All these will be discussed. So now, just I'll give you the information regarding electric current. So please write. Side Electric current. Electric current. Side D, electric current. <laughs> electric current is the rate of flow of electric charges. The rate of flow of electric charges is known as 
is known as electric current. The rate of flow of electric charges is known as electric current. And this electric current can be found out by using a formula. Look here, observe these ones. The rate of flow of electric charge. Some number of charged particles will pass through the cross section of the conductor. Hence, those number of charged particles to be taken as quantity of charge. Yes, students, please observe. Rate of flow of charges. The quantity of charges with respect to time. So we will write, write with me. Electric current, electric current is equal to quantity of charge, quantity of charge divided by time taken, or just you may write time. And the electric current is denoted by a symbol that is I. Please write with me. And the quantity of charge is denoted by the symbol Q. Time is denoted by the symbol T. So I is equal to Q by T is the formula used to find out the electric current. Written up. Can you tell what is other formula that we use to find out electric current? Yes. What is Q? Ampere. Quant no, no, no. Any by T. Any by T. You are right. And some others also told. You know that Q is quantity of charge. And the formula to find out quantity of charge is Q equal to Hence, we can rewrite this formula as I is equal to N E by T. I is equal to N E by T. Please do remember these two formula. These are the formula used to find out electric current. Then let us find out its yes or you Ampere. Yes, you need. Ampere. 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 Yes. Ampere. 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 A M P E R E ampere. It should be in small letters only. And can be used any form. Oh. Certainly, we can also go for using production whether with respect to unit or with respect to form. Sir, for work problems, you can use any formula. We should use only certain. Uh, Equation, sir. Formula, sir. For what? In solving of problems, sir. In solving problems, you can use uh, in any problem, uh, any any formula. Or, uh, only one formula you should use, sir. Oh, I'll tell you. Oh, I'll tell you. I understood your doubt. Now let me clarify that. See that you can use I equal to Q by T. This formula, if you know. Directly quantity of charge and time. If you know number of charge particles, charge of an electron and time, you can use this one. This is a unit of electric current is ampere. And I, as I said that in science, we have a culture that to honor our scientists because of their contributions. So we will go for taking the part of their name as the phys, uh, unit for unit for some physical quantity. Anderman. So the, the word ampere has been taken from Andre Maria. Taken from a great scientist is Andre Maria Ampere. Mary Ampere. Ander Mary Ampere. Please do remember. An ampere symbolic representation is A. But actually, other unit is there. Actual unit or other unit. 
do you know how to find out actual unit? It is to be found out by using the formula. Observe. Here, I is equal to Q by T is there. This is the formula. I is the current. Q is the quantity of charge. T is time. And what is the unit of quantity of charge? Coulomb. 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 Don't try it. Just observe. Unit of time? Second. 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 Now we can write another unit as Coulomb plus second. Okay. So here I'll write Coulomb per second. Coulomb per second. In bracket, you may write a symbolic form as C per yes. R S E C. You can also write it as C yes raised to the power minus one. C yes raised to the power minus one. Over up. Yes. Oh. Just observe. I'll take with respect to current only. Look here. Current formula is I is equal to Q by T. And now I'm going to take one ampere of current. Don't copy, observe. I'm going to take one ampere of current. If one ampere of current is there, and it can be done as one coulomb of charge by one second. One second. Oh. Observe it. One coulomb per one second is one ampere. Now we have to define one ampere. Don't write. Just observe. One ampere. Do you know the definition of one ampere or how do you define one ampere? Here only. Just to recall the definition of current. The flow of the one coulomb of, in one second. One coulomb per one second is one ampere. That is the representation. I'm asking you the definition. Recall the meaning of rate of flow of electric charges. That is the number of charged particles pass through any cross section of the conductor in the unit time. Once I repeat, the number of charged particles pass through any cross section of the conductor in the unit time is electric current. Here, number of, in place of number of charged particles, we have to take one coulomb. And unit time, we have to take one second. Just listen to me. The current flowing through the conductor, what I, I represents current, look here. Assume that the current flowing in this circuit is one ampere. It is possible if and only if, if and only if, one coulomb of charge particles pass through any cross section of the conductor in one second. <coughs> I repeat. When one coulomb of charge particles pass through any cross section of the conductor, in one second, then the current is said to be one ampere. One second only one coulomb of charged particles, cross-sectional pass argument. Then it is called one ampere. Clear up? Did you all understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In the examination, they may ask you the question directly like this. Define one ampere. Ah, what is, or it's define the SI unit of current for both, it is same only. The current flowing in the conductor is said to be one ampere if one coulomb of charged particles pass through any cross section of the conductor 
in one second. So write an equation and put star mark on it and give a formula also. <coughs> and one like that, put double star mark, write the definition. Stoke on above charge for two cross section. Then two, two ampere. If two Coulomb of charge particles pass through any cross, cross section of the conductor in one second, then the yeah, like in put it chill. Ah, then we can tell that. Right. First you write the definition. Current. Current flowing through the conductor. Through the conductor. section of the conductor any cross section of the conductor in one second in one second if one coulomb of charged particles pass through any cross section of the conductor in one second, then the current is said to be one ampere. And symbolically, it is written as, that is, one ampere is equal to one coulomb by one second. Alright, and we use the value of current as one amps, two amps, three amps, ten amps, like this. And to represent the small amount of current, if very small amount of current is flowing through the conductor, it can also be represented. For this, we go for using some of the prefixes. Those prefixes are. Here only I'm The prefixes are one is. You know what it is? What is M? Yes. Very good. It is. Then what is the value of milli? And is equal to 10 raised to minus 3. 10 to the power minus 3. 10 raised to the power minus 3. And dear students, see, even in your previous classes, you have learned about, you have come across the prefixes like centi, milli, micron, mega, giga, tera, femto. Is it not? Even nano, angstrom, all these. Here, mini means 10 raised to the power minus 3. Another symbol is here. What is micron this? Micron. Is micron. Is micron. Micron. Micron is, is precisely as 10 raised to the power minus, minus, six. minus 6. Next. N A. N is Nano. Nano, its value is 10 raised to the power minus 9 and Na. Next, one more. A naught, A. Do you know what does this A naught indicates? Angstrom. One. Very good. It is Angstrom. 
angstrom. The value of angstrom is 10 raised to the power minus 10. 10 raised to the power minus 10. Please do remember these prefixes. Midi, micro, nano, angstrom. Still some other are there. Some other like pico, femto, tera are they are there. Only these four must be remembered. Got it? Okay. Dear students, if some amount of electric current is flowing in the circuit, it can be measured. One, one student is asking the question that second one, it is not a UA. It is micron. Micron, it is the symbol of micron. Micron and pair. Okay. If some amount of electric current flowing through the conductor, so it can be measured by using a device. Do you know an electric measuring device used for amount of electric current flowing through? Ammeter. Yes, it is. Ammeter. Ammeter. Ammeter is a device used to measure the electric current flowing in the conductor. So now let me show you the, just a picture of ammeter. <clears throat> Look here. This is ammeter. You can observe that there are two terminals. One is positive and second one is negative. And you can also notice that here we have a scale. This is scale of ammeter. And just I'm bringing a bit close. Observe here. What it is? Young A. Ampere. Ampere. Means for small amount. Okay. For small amount of electric uh, electric current, we go for using this device. And observe, even this is also a meter. Ampere, sir. Uh, very good. It is directly ampere. One ampere, two ampere, three ampere, like this we'll take. So a meter. A meter is a device used to measure electric current flowing through the conductor. Suppose a, some amount of current is flowing in the conductor. Where, there may be very there may be very small amount of electric current. When very small amount of current is flowing under such condition, we, ca we cannot go for using uh, this ammeter under that condition to detect whether the current is flowing in the conductor or not, we go for using another device. And it is, it is also called current detecting device. Do you know what it is? Voltmeter. 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 No. The current detecting device. Once I repeat, when very small amount of electric current flowing in the conductor, the ammeter will not take the readings. Under such condition, we go for using one device to check the current. Microammeter. It is very good. Shashank, you are right. Shashank, you are right. It is galvanometer. Galvanometer, it is current detecting device. Remember. So, right. Regarding the devices, First one is ammeter. Ammeter, it is current measuring device. Right. Current measuring device. Current measuring device. And what galvanometer? Galvanometer, it is current detecting device. Current detecting 
device or not? <clears throat> okay, now, okay. with respect to a meter, we have some more information. That is, to measure the current flowing in the circuit, a meter should be connected in the circuit. And this a meter, this a meter is connected in series in the circuit. It should always be connected in series. That is, along with the components only, in the same line only, we will connect the a meter. Do you know the reason for connecting a meter in series in sir. the circuit? Question can be asked. A meter, a meter may burn, sir. A meter always connected in series. Resistance is low, sir. One is a meter has low electric resistance device. It will not the it will not oppose the flow of electrons. One thing. Second thing, when it is connected in series, it will not change the current. So that is why it is always connected in series. Like this. Don't copy, just observe it. See, and it is the meter and is positive and negative terminal. Look at this. And this is the circuit. And here is the battery. Negative terminal, positive, negative, and positive. And here is the switch. Observe it. This is the way we go for connecting the ammeter. See, along with the components, we'll connect. When, if it is connected like this, so there will be no change in the flow of current in the circuit. That is why it is connected in series. There are two reasons. One is, it has low electric resistance. Second one, it does not, it does not change the current. Clear? So we will get more information about a meter. Not only this, even some students... Sir, asked, if we not meter, connect sir. what will happen, sir? Sir, if we not connect what will happen, a meter. I'll give you the reason for all those. In tomorrow's class, we will come to know if it does, if it, if a meter is connected in parallel, let me tell you what will happen. And second thing, some student asked the question that what, what, what will make electrons to move in one particular direction and which will give energy for the electrons to move, uh, electron, uh, energy to the electrons to move in the particular direction. All these will be discussed in tomorrow's class. So in, in today's class, what are the terms we come across? Please do practice today itself without fail. So with this, okay, let sir. us stop the class. Thank you very much. Have Bye, a good sir. day. Thank you, sir. 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 Thank you, sir.